Bogwitz Podcast is episode 50 for the first time in live in Technicolor. Technicolor on the big screen. Live. Ooh, live. Okay. Woo-hoo. So how do we get out of the screen here? Let's stop sharing. So there we are. That's Jonathan and I'm Tim. This is Jonathan there and there's Howard the Duck poster and his Back to the Future poster. Yeah. I know, I know Justin's jealous. <laughs> All right. So uh, if he ever listens to the show, who knows? All right. Well, let's just dig into some with some fact check there. Fact check. Well, the only thing that I could come up with for fact check, it's been a while since we've uh, we've recorded. Uh, yeah. We took a little bit of a summer hiatus since we all had uh, places to go and things to do and uh, it was a little see. dry sci-fi wise yeah. uh, it was pointed out by our number one fan that uh, we talked about the Cats trailer in mm-hmm. the last episode when we were doing our trailer Orama mm-hmm. and uh, we never actually circled back and talked about how damn bad that Cats trailer was. I so. didn't watch it that's how bad it was Yeah, it was. I could just imagine how bad it would be right? It was maybe the dumbest thing I've ever seen <laughs> put to film and I've seen a lot of bad movies over the years. Right, right but it looks epically, tragically like I'm embarrassed for those participating yeah. bad. So yes, that was all we have for fact check. We did uh, we did not circle back on on cats. Uh, good luck to that movie. I hope it does well because <laughs> it looks like it's going to need some help. All right, all right. Well, let's dig in some some stuff here. Um, we we have a lot of catching up to do. So can we just whip through these real quick? Yeah, I just there was a a few things that I thought we should probably touch base on because we hadn't really talked about them so far. So uh, I wanted to. <laughs> well, you got we got one poster here behind me about Spider-Man is out of the MCU thanks to Disney slash Sony standoff. Yeah, and the follow-up item to that is, no wait, he's back. So uh, we haven't recorded in so long, we actually literally circled all the way around from Spider-Man has left the MCU thanks to a standoff. Oh, mm-hmm. no wait, they've actually come back to the table and, right, and right. settled that. So uh, that was a big kerfuffle and, uh, you know, we probably would have made many mountains out of that little molehill, but uh, right, right. they've got it all straightened out and apparently for at least, at least one more picture, uh, Spider-Man Spider-Man picture, and then apparently at least one other MCU movie, we're going to get Spider-Man back in the MCU, which is great news. Cool. Uh, obviously, uh, a fun character and, and deserves to be part of the MCU. It's a shame that there's this this weird uh, business arrangement that, that leaves them out hanging oh. out there. But okay, and by the way, it's episode 50, in case I end up cutting the, in- the actual introduction. Oh, by the way, welcome to episode 50. I'm Tim Mitra, and I'm in Toronto, Ontario, and I'm joined once again by Jonathan Kuline in Mr. and Mrs. Saga, Ontario. Hey! Hello, hey, everybody. We're back! Woo-hoo. All right, cool. Now I can stop sharing. All right, so back to back to uh, where we were. Where did we leave off? Well, we guess we can talk about Disney Plus, right? Yeah, Disney Plus. So uh, we also got some news, uh, sort of late in the summertime, about uh, Disney Plus. They had their D Disney had its D twenty three conference uh, mm-hmm. out there in Anaheim, and they dropped another bunch of uh, new shows on us, which is exciting. So we got uh, three new Marvel shows that are going to be on Disney Plus. We got Moon Knight, we got nice. Ms. Marvel, and we got She Hulk, all of which really interesting potential series, and we also got confirmation that they're finally going to circle back and do <gasps> Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus uh, starring Ewan McGregor. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah, wow. so definitely some exciting news there. Um, I'm a, a fan of all those comic book characters and Obi-Wan, so I'm excited for this. Uh, this is just becoming like the no-brainer purchase of the year buying Disney Plus. it's on for like seven or eight years, we can actually watch him age into Alec Guinness, right? That's right. So eventually he's just going to go full gray and it won't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in other new news, mm-hmm. we got uh, news that they're making... Wait, are we, are, I'm still in the new news or the old news no this is the new news we've got a couple more new newish news well relatively no we're not in the newer news we're in the old, in the old new, news. new news yeah the, the big new news uh big okay. old news all right matrix four we're getting a matrix part four Keanu reeves carrie ann moss and uh one of the wachowski sisters is going to come back and do wachowski a matrix sisters? Part four. uh yes well the the brothers have both transitioned so they are both uh um, oh i'm sorry both identified Pardon women me. now okay so lana is going to come back and uh, this is Helm. why we shouldn't be doing video because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> so sad. Um, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, again, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how they come at this. Obviously, uh, the franchise left on mm-hmm. a bit of a weird note with uh, the emancipation of the humans under the robots, but mm-hmm. then also the seeming death of yeah. those two characters. Not too big of a spoiler from a movie from like 20 years ago, but... Two characters are we talking about? Uh, well, uh, Neo and Trinity. Oh, so they died? They, they died at the end of that oh. so that's kind of weird well maybe james cameron's bringing them back uh wait that's a different franchise a <laughs> uh, couple other quick ones uh krypton the movie uh or the movie the tv show on sci-fi got canceled mm-hmm. uh and that took krypton with uh that took uh, the lobo series that they were talking about doing with it they're not going to do either of those anymore lobo sorry i didn't catch me up lobo is a very popular 1990s dc comics character uh sort of wolverine from space kind of mm-hmm. uh deal 
and he had, I guess, a guest starred on the second season of Krypton. And they were saying, well, if he gets a good premiere, then maybe they'll spin him into his own show. They're going to do a pilot, but apparently they've just gotten out of the Krypton business entirely. So that's gone. Uh, we got news that Kevin Smith, the famed director of Clerks, is going to be doing a Masters of the Universe Revelation mm-hmm. anime series uh, on Netflix. He's just, uh, I've listened to a couple of his podcasts talking about yeah. that. Uh, very Sounds very interesting. Sounds like they've got a really uh, passionate team of, of creators working on that. So that could be really interesting. I'm not a huge uh, Masters of the Universe fan, but I must admit, I, I'm curious to see what they do with that. Mm-hmm. And the last little bit of old but interesting news was uh, late in August, we got news that CBS and Vi com were merging now this is not always you know who really cares about corporate mergers but this one is really impactful for a couple of reasons these two companies used to be unified and then they separated in the early 2000s right. bringing them back together is really kind of interesting because this is the rights holder of star trek on tv and the rights holder of star trek in movies mm-hmm. they had actually been separated so those universes the reason there's that whole kelvin timeline and things are being completely different over the last three star trek films is related to that hmm. So they haven't said immediately what the impact of this is going to be, but it is actually pretty relevant for Star Trek fans because what it means is all of those properties, whether it's movie or television, are all under the same uh, ownership now. So if they decide they want to do an an event where they merge those universes, if they want to do a big crossover, if they want to do, uh, you know, even just sharing those films on CBS All Access, they can now do that. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And that really opens up a potential next decade where we can see a really big expansion of the Star Trek franchise. So I'm I'm excited about that one. And also there was, you know, was it $28 billion, I think they said? Hmm. $28 billion in revenue combined between CBS and Viacom. Uh, this merger actually makes them bigger than Comcast, bigger than Warner, bigger than Fox, right. bigger than Disney, um, as far as US audience share. So this is the, the single biggest audience share in America right now is this new merged company. Oh, okay. So yeah, pretty cool. All right. Let's get to the newer news. Newer news. All right. Right, uh, the Joker movie. You and I, I haven't seen the Joker movie yet. I have seen the Joker movie. You saw the Joker movie without me, you bugger. Well, you didn't. You sounded like you didn't want to go. So. <laughs> I must admit, I I didn't really want to go. Yeah. So I will give you the news, and then you will tell me what you thought of this movie. Okay, that would be that's fair enough. Yeah. All right. So Joker record debut. Uh, mm-hmm. It made ninety uh, was it ninety three point five million dollars in its mm-hmm. first weekend, setting a new record for August uh, October mm-hmm. rather. Yeah. Um, huge. Oh, sorry. Ninety. 6 million US, 248 million globally is where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, yeah, this is a, an opening record for the month of October. And this is in spite of the fact that there was actually a bit of ramped up security and stuff around the fact that people <laughs> were worried about uh, anarchists and what they might do around yeah. a movie, around somebody who's an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty significant. Um, and I must admit, I'm, I am I heard over the course of the summer, uh, they had this movie at the Toronto International Film Festival. Yeah, yeah. I I heard good things about it mm-hmm. and the hype started to ramp up. There was talk that uh, Joaquin Phoenix could be, you know, an Oscar contender, right. uh, that they really went somewhere interesting with this character in this mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. I still am having a really tough time caring. So you tell me, Tim, what was this actually like? Well, it, it's interesting. I, a good friend of mine, uh, I, I did go to TIFF this year and I, I did see a number of films, interesting films. I, of course, couldn't get into the Joker or whatever to save my life. Um, but a friend of mine did see it. So uh, we were chatting on on uh, our, our chat thing that we use at work this weekend and Jason is his name by the way Jason Chu hey Jason um, probably doesn't listen to this show anyway so why do I give him a shout out but my review no, he has to listen well so so the cinematography is amazing like it, it is like whoever the director was and the director of, of cinematography they definitely deserve a pat on the back if not an Oscar I mean it was it was you know beautifully shot like from the point of view of, like overlays of tra- you know trains running down there's one scene where there's a train going up the middle of the screen and you see the city on both sides very sort of get that sort of gotham feeling to it you know when he goes mm-hmm. up arkham asylum it's very gothamy um you know it's got that sort of you know new york metropolitan kind of vibe to it and you know color wise it was very good looking um and but but the story was meh it was you know derivative mm-hmm. uh you know like you know when when uh francis if i name the place of the mother francis oh something with a c um anyway I, I can look it up but anyway she's she's pretty good in it but she's a typical typical sort of Aunt May, you know, kind mm. of character. Um, I, I do have a question for you, and I, I don't think this will spoil this for you specifically, but because you've read the books, right? And you uh, might have read a Joker comic or two in my time, yes. Okay. One or two, at least? M- right. Maybe one or two. So is he related? 
related to Bruce Wayne? Not in the comic books. Not in the comics. So I don't want to. I don't want to spoil this for you because you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, there's there's an implied relationship. Francis Conroy is uh, plays his mother apparently. Francis Conroy, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think I got her. She's uh, she was from um, Six Feet Under, and I got her confused with the the mother from Sopranos, right? Mm, yeah, that. yeah. Like you can see here. Like here's here's an example of a picture. This is this is a uh, this see, this staircase is in the in the film a few times, and you see the Joker as you know what's his real name? I forget. Um, a Joaquin Phoenix? No, the the character uh, when he's not Joker. Um, well, yeah, I, you know, which character name did they go by? What's the Joker's real name? Uh, in the comic books, I don't know if he's ever properly been named. Oh, okay. they, they, he's named they, here. They yeah. named him in the uh, in the movie, obviously the original Batman movie. Yeah, yeah. And I think some have sort of picked that up and run with it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't remember if they've actually given him a name in the comic. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I, I, I hope you can see my screen. I'm sharing this right now. I'm just scrolling through a bunch of images on the interwebs, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not really seeing anything that other than you know the actual pictures of his face. Which again, so so when when my friend Jason asked me about his his portrayal you know like oh what do you think was an amazing portrayal and I thought you know what all you need to do is channel Heath Ledger and you, you're you bound to be an Academy Award contender right because mm-hmm. he did such a fantastic job at that right um, not, not Cesar Romero no well eh, Cesar Romero yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah with the mustache right yeah oh yeah the painted over mustache yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. actually I wonder if I go back in my search you want to see yeah I mean in the movie he was Jack Napier that's what they called him in, in uh, 1989 in the Tim Burton Batman film. No, no, a different name in this one. Uh, this is supposed to be... Oh, hang on. Here we go. This, apparently, it was a couple of years ago in the comics. I'm, I must admit, I'm a couple of years behind in my Batman reading. I'm only caught up to about five years ago, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I can go to the IMDb as well. Hang on. Oh, it says Jack Napier will be the name of the character in the comics. Wow. In the comics? Yeah. So apparently, apparently, that's what they've named him in the comics as well. Well, you guys see us go to talk about IMDb all the time. Let's just do that right now. Oh, where the hell did it go? Okay. And you click on the actual link here. It works much better on the iPad. Let's see. Who does he play? He plays Arthur Fleck is the name of the Joker in this movie. Oh, yeah. I don't, that doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, yeah. So, don't see any 169 images. Let's see. Sort of point to the... Just, it's just talking about the cinematography. Anyway, you know what? Would I have gone out of my way to watch this movie? Uh, I, you know, if you watch the trailer, you've seen a lot of the, the character portrayal nuances, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I think in the trailers, they, they give away, like, you know, a lot of the story. Um, they do they do expect the audience to empathize with uh, with Black in the story, right? Yeah. Um, you know, as this down, downtrodden, you know, abused, a misunderstood guy, right? Yeah. But, but and, and they do, there are some, there are some, uh, they play with his, his uh, um, mental... Uh, uh, it issues uh, fairly well in the movie. I'm not going to give that away either. By that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, was it was it really necessary for me to go on on first night? I don't think so. I did. I did go on the first day because so, uh, you know I just saw some seats in the in the theater that were vacant and I had some time to kill. So um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like. It's like it, you know what? It's it's the solo of DC movies. Whoa, that could be taken many ways. Well, I mean, I still wanted to see Solo. I think I, you know Solo is still a good movie to see in the theater. It's got lots of. I mean, like the you know. What's her name from Fleabag is in it. You know, I didn't realize it was, it was her. Yeah, she was the time. robot, though. You just yeah, felt like yeah. you got to see her Phoebe Waller Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you, you get her mannerisms and things, which is, you know, in her in her expressions and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I did watch it again. I watched it again to sort of see the twist in the end there and all that kind of stuff at the end of, uh, of Dolo, that is, right? Mm-hmm. There is no, like, when the credits roll, get out of your seat, go to your car. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing at the end. No spoilers there. Uh, me and one other guy waited and it was like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, like, so let's, so has DC had any really decent movies in, in recent times? I mean, the last movie that got talked about this, this way, I mean, they, they got a lot of people, a lot of people last year loved Aquaman. Mm-hmm. A lot of people the year before that really liked seen. Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder you know, those movies yeah, yeah. had a lot of buzz, mm-hmm. but not in the way that they're saying like, oh, Joaquin Phoenix could be up for an Oscar for Best Actor. Todd Phillips could be up for nomination for the filmmaking. Um, you know, that's some of the buzz that's out there for this film. The last time that that happened, was Dark uh, the Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. Right, Dark and Knight. And the reason that that one sort of also sort of hit was everyone was talking about, um, you know, the performance of the Joker in there, but they also, uh, you know, that movie well, took on a life of its own after he died too, right? Yeah. It's, you know, if I if I have to compare it to, say, a Batman movie, for instance, and I'm not considering this 1968 classic um, or 69, whatever it is, uh, but if I had to look at the Christopher, no, the, um, who's the new guy? Uh, or not the new guy, the one before Affleck. Christian Bale? Christian Bale. If I had to look at his movies, it was nowhere near Dark Knight, right? It was a little worse than the third movie, 
with um, Bane, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but he's nowhere near as sinister as Bane, and, and there's there's no sort of like you know, I mean, there were some some you know sleight of hand stuff that happened in in Dark Knight with Heath Ledger's character. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't really go that far with this, you know. Yeah. Um, but like like I said, they do sort of they do sort of explore Joker's particular psychosis a bit in a really interesting way. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I think a lot of people will wait till it comes out on on the Netflix and you know the Hulu and whatever, uh, and and they think they'd be well well advised to, to you know unless I mean I don't get me wrong I, I love going to the theater and watching movies in the theater. Well, you you raved about the cinematography. That's the one that always gets me into the theater. Again, I'll, yeah. I'll go see. There's yeah. some directors and some filmmakers that I want to see. Like Christopher Nolan is yeah. one example, right? Yeah. yeah. His movies look amazing when they're shown on a full size screen. Yeah. I mean that that I mean so you can see it in IMAX. I didn't see it in IMAX. I saw it in the VIP. Uh, I think it might have been really even cooler in in IMAX because you'd get the full you know full image. I mean there were some you know wide shots that were just stunning. Hmm. You know not quite graphic novelly stunning, but like stunning in terms of urban you know landscape kind of shooting and stuff like that. Hmm. But very well lined up and, and one one shot in particular, like I said, this train cutting up through the city. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, cool. let's that's that's enough with the Joker thing. I, did we talk about the numbers? I mean, it's, it's phenomenally huge. It's like the biggest movie since biggest like, movie right? release in October, and yeah. uh, yes, it's it made almost a dark time or something. Quarter or? of a billion. Yeah. Well, typically this time of year we see a lot of horror movies, as you'd expect around Halloween, right. um, and then we start to get a trickle of the of the Oscar pre Oscar fair. Right. We're right, starting to see right. stuff pre award season. So yeah. this one actually is sort of a sneaker because it's kind of comic booky, but it's not. It's kind of horror-y, but it's not. And it's right. kind of Oscar bait. Yeah, so. I'm not going to go into the horror because there is a, there is some definite horror. But but I can tell you this much: I can see why it was at death. Yeah, from that point of view, yes. If you're if you're a movie, what do you call a movie file? Or what do you, what do we call movie file people? Uh, cinephile. Cinephile. If you're, if, yeah. If you're if you're in if your thing is you know, movies and large screens and and you know with the popcorn and the whole bit, I, I it is, it's an interesting movie. Not a date movie. No. Unless no. You're, unless your partner's really into the whole DC universe kind of thing, yeah, which that does happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a um, yeah, there's a there's a weird spot for movies like that. It's somewhere between the what uh, there was that whole kerfuffle this week, right? Francis Ford Coppola or was it yeah. uh, was talking about how you know Marvel movies aren't cinema; they're only movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. This one seems like it's sort of straddling that line between cinema and movie, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember what the other movies I saw. Oh, so we we'll move on to our uh, our trailerama here. Yeah, you just hit share. Hold on to your socks, kids. I'm going to take over the sharing here. I'm going to show you the trailer while Tim and I talk about it for Lost in Space Season 2. How do I minimize my screen? Take Maybe. My screen, I can't see. Hold on to your socks. Oh, there we go. Cool. Yep. All right, here we are. Wait, Lost in Space Season Lost 2. So time. last week uh, around the New York Comic Con, we got a bunch of trailers that started to come out. Uh, we'll be talking about a bunch of those in a little bit. Obviously, a bunch of Star Trek news that we're excited about. But the other thing that came out of this was uh, we got our first look at Season 2 for Lost in Space, the Netflix okay. series. This is where the other series ended, right? Uh, the other series ended with the the uh, people jumping away and them getting left behind. Oh. So once again, to circle back after that technical hiccup, this is our first look at season two of Lost in Space. They also announced the release date, which is coming on conveniently on December 24th. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Christmas is canceled. I'm going to be watching uh, Lost in Space. Well, isn't that when Doctor Who Christmas special is on? Or Are they doing a Christmas, Christmas special day? this year? They well, did a Christmas special that's... last year. That's yeah, Christmas Day, though, right? Yeah, that's right. We didn't did, didn't do one last year, did yeah. they? No, last year they did the New Year's special. Oh, wow. Still felt wrong. <laughs> so, obviously, this is a little more focused on just the, the, uh, the, Wait, the survivors. Wait, is Captain Lorca the leader of this group, group again? I forget. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Captain Lorca's the dad, isn't he? Jason, what's his name? Jason Isaacs? Yeah. I'm gonna find him. I still don't like the robot in this one. Good. I mean, I like him, but I don't like him. He's not, you know, goofy like the old robot used to be. Lost in Space 2. Lost in Space The two. sequel. Lost in Space All episodes December 24th, only on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about the whole binging thing? Like, does that not eat into your time? It it makes it challenging on a lot of shows because you end up with a lot of these ones where you will, um, you'll end up in these circumstances where you're trying to play beat the clock with the internet. Because I do go to a lot of blogs and stuff. I am, uh, my my job is in social media. So uh, I tend to be in the blogosphere and the social media sphere a lot. So it's really hard to avoid Mm -hmm. 
spoilers. Mm -hmm. And so I do find myself wanting more often than not to try and get through things quickly. And that doesn't always fit with, uh, you know, being a busy person, their parents and all those other things. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 one of the points that was raised on one of the other pods that I like to listen to, they, they were talking about how, when you look at some shows that drop week to week, think about game of Thrones, think about, uh, you know, some of the sort of zeitgeist shows from the last few years. Yeah. Oh, those shows are good because they actually give you a week for places like us to be able to talk about them. Discovery is another example mm -hmm. where we can actually have a week to digest and process and think and, and sort of, you know, take it all in. Whereas if you had them all at once, I, again, imagine right now, if discovery came out in one big lump sum, you Which and I and, and Jaime would be frustrated, right? Yeah. We'd have a really long episode of Spotcast. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd be like, okay, we're going to do our annual Spotcast episode, kids. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's the same thing for Game of Thrones and some of these other sort of uh, more contemporary shows that come week to week. Yeah. I think I like the time to digest a little bit. You know, Stranger Things dropped over the summer in, in July and I did finish it until into August because I just had other priorities and, and responsibilities and other things going on. Right. And I, I lived in fear that it was going to be spoiled for me and that's that's mm -hmm. not a fun thing to do. There's talk that Netflix is considering doing that for some shows going forward. Not all shows, but some shows going forward that they'll drop well, week by week. I started watching Explained. Have you watched the Explains? You know, the you know, yes. DNA yeah. Explained, whatever. And that yeah. one, they drop like a, well, a show each week, right? Well, and the ones they do in partnership here in Canada, they have a partnership with uh, CW, which is uh, shows a lot of the DC based shows. Mm -hmm. So they've taken over airing The Flash. They've taken over airing. Um, they were airing iZombie, things like that. Riverdale's on here. All of those are week to week. Right. Now, the infuriating part of that is that they're not same day and time as they are in the United States. States, we have to wait several days. That's actually ridiculous. Yeah. We talked about that last year when they had a crossover series between the DC uh, television shows, the Arrowverse shows. And for us here in Canada, they aired out of order because The Flash, which was supposed to be the second part, didn't come out till two days later here. So you, we had to watch one, then three, then two of the, of the episodes, which is, again, in a world where the internet is on top of stuff as soon as it's on, that, that's a ridiculous notion. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I mean... I, I like having the time to sort of go after it. That being said, of a modern TV thing, the thing that actually uh, I find more challenging is is the long seasons. I love the Flash TV show. I love Supergirl. Mm -hmm. I love watching the things I love watching that are still on contemporary television. But I do not need 22 episodes of it at all. At all. Uh, if they told a very focused 12 episodes or 14 episodes, I would be ecstatic. You know, like... I don't understand why they haven't roped into the logic of doing those things sequentially, where you basically do 14 of this and 14 of that and 14 of this and 14 of that or 12 of this and 12 of that. You could do so much more interesting stuff. Now, I understand, obviously, there's production costs and everything involved in that, wrapping things up, wrapping things around and stuff like that. But I, I just find that much more compelling. You know, we're, we're getting closer and closer to that British model of six episodes, right? You know, yeah. an entire series is six episodes. Or right? What's Luther right now? Is what, like three, three episodes in well, an hour and a half? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's funny. Like, I was just watching Fleabag. Like, I said, right? And yeah, I think I watched Fleabag in two days because they're they're short 20 minute or 30 minute episodes. Yep. And you yep. one after the other, bang, 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 right? So, yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. and it's amazing. So you just want to keep reading, uh, reading, watching it. But, watching, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, you know, there's so many shows like that where again, on one hand, you're like, oh, it's over. But then you have the satisfaction of, well, I've, I've completed the journey and yeah. I didn't have to invest months or years of my life. Yeah. Well, I just listened to an interview with her actually after, because after, after it was over, I'm, Again, my PVR. Thank you, Rogers, for creating the worst PVR in the world. <laughs> so, I for for the whole summer, it recorded all kinds of episodes of of uh, Saturday Night Live, and then this Saturday, the one episode I wanted to watch when I wasn't at home, mm -hmm. you know, I went, I went out I, again. I went went, went watch the Joker because I knew that Saturday Night Live would be recording. I got home, at, you know, one o'clock in the morning, and went, oh, let's just see what the monologue was, and there was like no recording. Yeah, so I had to go and hunt, you know, and trying to find Saturday Night Live on on YouTube, at, you know, a day or two later is horrible. So, but anyway, that's, it, that's it, another weird of, So, but I saw an older interview with her talking mm -hmm. to Fallon, let's say, or either John, Jimmy, Jimmy Jimmy Fallon or um, or uh, Colbert, saying that you know she was talking about coming back to do Fle Fleabag. So mm -hmm. apparently, Fleabag started out as a play, 
way and then yep. and then she did it as a as a uh, story like a, as a as a series six episodes like their traditional british format right and then um which is i don't understand the six six episodes as opposed to 13 like we do here right um in north america you know where we drive on the correct side of the road but why um, stretch it out right like that's the theory right if you tell a story tell the story and what it takes to tell the story right right anyway so but then but then so so i think what but i don't know if did it come did fleabag come out and then you had to wait for season two or yes so it did okay because because i just went and watched season one and two and, and no, I, I watched season one before i watched season two but i mean like was there like a pause which before season two came out yeah like a year oh okay okay all right like a year okay well apparently it's not she's not doing a three or yeah no she said uh she said if she revisits that she plans to do it in her 50s so uh but <laughs> that's again that's good it's good in its own way again clearly she's you know she's obviously a very very talented person and, and uh you know i admire people who aren't just married to that one piece of art you know who live off mm-hmm. that one thing over and over again mm-hmm. so. yeah interesting well, let's move on i mean like you know yeah we can talk about this particular over and over you probably will but <laughs> probably will what's next next up another trailer should we try this one more time oh should we do a trailer okay yeah all right let's try this one more time Ooh, i can see your screen well then that means it's working yeah the little thingy the loading thing is spinning hold on to your screen. socks full screen folk here we go this episode of spotcast brought to you by this advertisement here which we're not getting any money for we can neither enforce the values of ram nor deny them right did they blow up real good here we are rick and morty season four Ooh. our first full trailer obviously how long, it, how long has it been since last uh it's been a couple of years i think almost three wow yeah it's been a long break uh obviously in that time they negotiated a new contract so they're going to do multiple seasons which is really awesome nice. yeah yeah just like futurama right yeah so they they come back strong uh but they've announced yeah we're, we're finally going to get our first uh look at rick and morty new episodes in a long time hmm. some familiar faces in there i saw mr meeseeks from season one right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Lab coat, rip off Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Poopy Butthole, yeah. also back from season one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I have to work yet. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> so have you have you seen uh, have you seen have you seen the theory of going back and watching to see which Morty is actually in the show? I've heard that. Yeah, that there's a whole whole line of logic that says that it's not really the Morty we started with. Yeah. Well, and or even even um, Doc Brown, not Doc Brown, um, Rick, right? Rick. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I got to go back and watch it again. Like, thank you for somebody bought me Jonathan bought me the the box set there. I guess the digital box. But yeah, that was your Father's Day gift. Yeah, so I had, you know, it's funny. I had seen like I think there were like four or five episodes I hadn't seen at all, but it was yeah. nice to watch them all in order as well. Too, right? Yeah, no. I was just getting randomly off of off of something at like midnight, at, you know, whatever. Before I realized that I actually have adult stream and I can watch it anytime I want. Yeah. Oh well. Well, now you have them forever, or as long as Apple lets you have them. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yep. So that's good news. Two good mm-hmm. shows coming up. Mm-hmm. Excited for those. A uh, little bit extra news. So uh, we got news today that uh, Hellstrom, the another. Uh, Hulu Marvel show is okay. finally found its stars. So that's okay. kind of neat. Um, this is a story that's based on the original comic from the 70s called Son of Satan. Um, and so they've announced today, let's see, this is from Deadline. Fresh off a role as besieged President Elizabeth Keene on Homeland and an unforgiving stint on Netflix's unbelievable Elizabeth Marvel joins uh, uh, yeah, joins the, joins the show. That's cool. And she's going to be playing Hellstrom's brother. Let's see. Oh, oh okay. That's the person who's going to be running the show. There we go. Mm-hmm. Um, set to debut next year on Disney controlled streamer, Hellstrom will be led by Tom Austin and Sidney Lemon mm-hmm. as the stars. So yeah, finally start to see this one take shape again. It'd be interesting to see how this proceeds. Uh, so this is, uh, I'm just looking at their bios. So Tom Austin was on a show called the Royals and another show called Grantchester. Sidney Lemons from fear of the walking dead in succession. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how, Oh, it's, so it's yeah. Elizabeth Marvel plays Victoria Hellstrom. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, it's been interesting to see how they pull this one together because it is pretty dark. Even as a comic series in the 70s, it was kind of dark. And moving that forward, it's going to be really dark um, to see how that one goes forward because it's about the son of Satan and this is a Disney show. Right. So I'm not sure how they pull that together and make that something that's, you know, cohesive and not, you know, blood and guts and, and you know, Satan worshipping and all the things that Disney doesn't like. Right. A uh, little extra bit from the Walking Dead universe. So as part of the New York Comic Con uh, out tr- onto the stage came uh, Lauren Cohen, who famously was Maggie Ree on the show. Uh, Did her show she... been canceled though? Her, when, her... Yes, the one show that she was on for one season has been canceled. And 
And so apparently she's going to come back and they're going to sort of tie up what happened with her character, where she went, what happened to her uh, in the next season. And they also announced at that same event that it has been renewed for season 11 already. Season 10 just premiered uh, a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. So hold on to your socks, kid. There's more Walking Dead coming. They also showed the first trailer for the new Walking Dead show, which I have not seen yet. So I'm not going to go too far down that rabbit hole. But um, yeah, so we're we're headed towards a world where we're going to have three Walking Dead shows and uh, and apparently some Walking Dead movies in development too starring uh, oh, Andrew Lincoln so I have news. I have news on that front and, and this is it's a spot cast news I guess you know mm. like who, are, who, else, who else would care um, but yeah I am not watching season 10 and I stopped watching Fear of the Walking Dead oh okay and I've taken taken them off the rotation on my PVR I, I, I've lost interest yeah I, I did not watch all uh, did not watch any of season 9 of Walking Dead and I have only watched the first season of Fear uh, the Walking Dead well, um, Fear the Walking Dead was getting good and but yeah, now it's just yeah. It's, you know what? It, after a while, like like we had George Stromalopoulos on one of our podcasts once, and I asked him if he watched the show, and he said no. He said because I know how it ends. Yeah, yeah. And and he's right. You know, in retrospect, because it just it's just it never ends. It's just an ongoing. You know, oh, we have to go get some resources. Oh, and these a holes are trying to kill us and take all our stuff. And you know, you know, how many times can they they, they you know blog that or oh wait, these guys are way worse because they wear death masks and you know <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah. Oh, and these yeah. like little kids are surviving on their own like give me a break you know yeah well again that's the problem with all of these sort of post-apocalyptic things is that the, the notion plays itself out and i will say you know there have been um you know some interesting ups and downs but it does become a little unrelenting and especially mm-hmm. in a show you know that has been criticized for being you know murder porn uh you know it does really kind of keep going you know you're like oh i'm attached to this character oh they introduced some new characters oh i like that character oh they killed mm-hmm. that character oh this new mm-hmm. character oh the, the, you know especially when you start losing longtime characters like rick and maggie and and right. you know they did kill off some you know major characters over the years too so you kind of have to really be invested with a handful of people that have been around the whole time but right, right, right. yeah i'm not uh I'm, I'm not too far on board i keep telling myself that eventually i'll catch up uh, and you know when they finally wrap it up but it's comic books are like this for me too you know there have been some comics that have been around for ages and ages and ages and i just couldn't keep buying them month to month so now mm-hmm. i buy them in a collected edition because mm-hmm. it yeah. just to go on forever you know it's only a select number of of titles that will sort of have a little story arc or they'll have a well, you know beginning and a middle and an end mm-hmm. so many of these just keep going and go, go, go. Well, and then there's so much of it like you know, like it's like like people complain about podcasts like how many different podcasts can you listen to and they, you know they'll drop and listen to us for a while and then they'll go off and do something else and maybe they'll come back later but yeah. or they'll or they'll binge it like from, from the very beginning which is surprising but you know like there's so many books to read there's so many movies to go see you know yeah. movies is the one format like i mean theater movies is the one format where you go to the theater and you watch it right well, and we talked about that before, you know, my, my longtime stance is that it's the last place where you don't just sit there with your phone out while you're doing it. Yeah. If you're, oh, that's if, true. Good point. You know, if you're sitting at home and you're listening to music, you can have your phone out. If you're sitting there watching TV, you might also have your phone out or your tablet or your computer or whatever. The movie is sort of that last place where, you know, it's not okay to have your phone out and you're really immersed in the moment. That's why yeah. I like going to see movies in movie theaters. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, it, you're, you're absolutely right. And even, you know, my son uh, says that all the time, you know, Number I can't decide man. what I want to do most i want to i want to play this video game but i also want to read this comic book but i also want to watch this well, movie this is the but thing. i also like, want to catch this television show yeah so for me i'm producing podcasts and I'm, I'm writing code and i'm trying to learn new stuff and i just don't like like watching television almost becomes an invasion especially if i have to pay attention because a lot of times i'll have tv shows in the background and you know like i'm yeah. watching a new uh, well i'm watching a new colby smothers not colby smothers yeah it's colby smothers uh, i thought that was a character name Stumptown. yeah i'm watching that and it's really yeah. interesting but but again it's a cop show like you know how much yeah. attention do you really need to pay attention to it I mean, there's a few things in the corner you might miss if you, if you look away but you can almost just hit rewind and you know yeah. watch it again but so i do but like most of the time i'm working i'm coding i'm doing research whatever and i just don't have time to read or play i don't play games i mean um we talked about the apple arcade on spot or on on the other show more than just code because none of the other guys were running ios 13 or or, or or you know they didn't run the beta program so they couldn't get into watching playing the arcade so i signed up for the trial of arcade and it was supposed to renew next week i just canceled because i just don't play enough games to warrant paying I, measly four ninety nine, but still, or five ninety nine Canadian, but still, yeah, I don't warrant, and I don't play enough games to warrant the expense, you know. So yeah, no, it's fair. It's, it's fair. Just, there's just there's only so many hours in the day, and you know, like I want to get into doing painting and whatever, and printing t shirts and stuff, but you know, doesn't yeah. buy it. Can we skip the next two stories and just end the old news, or is there anything really interesting in the old news that we need? Uh, to- the old news, I think we can skip entirely. Okay, because I, I think- want to jump down to the main the main stuff. The, yeah, the enchil- main enchiladas, because at the end of the day, like um, I don't know if you heard 
heard, but or he listened to the episode. But I was on a I was on a podcast the other day where I, I did a talk on neuroplasticity and how it applies to learning and and how you know people in my industry develop developers and use it to their advantage. But anybody can. I mean, like kids can use it in school. You could use it in your work, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll link to that podcast. It was from OK Production. But they asked me in the podcast because I mentioned Spotcast, right? And they asked mm-hmm. me, so am I a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan? Mm-hmm. Like, which way do I lean? And I'm like, you know, to be honest with you, like, yeah, I've seen a lot of Star Trek, but you know, I, I missed the whole whack of seasons out of like the whole last bunch of seasons out of um, Voyager, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the last couple of episodes to see how they got home and stuff like that. But I just like a, a month ago, I watched the Borg episode with where, um, or just a couple of weeks ago, I watched the Borg episode where Seven of Nine goes back and finds this sort of faction of Borg people who have this imaginary world, matrix world they can go into and, mm-hmm. and relate, even though they were, and they were all connecting over the network kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen that episode before, right? And um, or the one where where Seven and Nine gets in trouble because she's doing the time traveling thing, and the guy who's the, causing the problem is the guy who's running the, the program and that one. Yeah. Um, but I, I never saw those anyway. And 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 same thing with the Next Generation. I stopped watching Next Generation after a whole while, so I don't, I can't say categorically whether I've watched every single episode of the Next Generation either, right? Mm-hmm. Deep Space Nine is a gap there for me as well. But I have seen every single Star Wars thing, you know. And I, of course, I watched Star Trek when I when it first was on. TV and then I watched it in reruns forever. I think I was with me and five other guys were watching it throughout their late 70s there, early 70s, I think. Um, and because uh, it was like on set, it was on every day. It was like the Flintstones and you just kind of, you know, you ate cereal while you watched Star Trek kind of thing, right? Um, and my sisters like would tune it out and not even watch it. But, you know, but Star Wars, I don't know, I just I, I seem to be drawn to Star Wars for some strange reason. So if, Well, if, it's if, much more digestible too. Again, for the longest time, it really was just about the central films. Yeah. You know, there, there have been some yeah. TV show stuff in there, but, you know, again, depending how sort of you know expansive your idea of Star Wars is too. There are the the TV. Well, I haven't shows. watched Clone Wars. I haven't watched Rebel. You know Rebels and Resistance, and yeah. all those are in canon now. Like those are all part of legit. You know, as far as the the company's concerned, those are real events that happened. So yeah. um, you know, you can decide whether or not those are important to watch overall. But yeah, no, you're right. I mean, the thing about Trek is it's there's you know and I think Xavier's felt that too. You know, he was like, oh, maybe I'll start at the beginning. And I was like, it's going to take you years to Forever. go through yeah. and watch every episode of the original series and TNG and Deep Space Nine and Voyager and Enterprise. Yeah. You know, you, by the time you work through and you've got 13 movies to watch and you've got yeah. this and you, you know, it, watch the animated series. Like there's a lot of places to go. Now, uh, you know, confession, I have all those. They're on my shelf. I um, and I've watched, I would say every episode of every single series at least once with right. the possible exception of, I don't think I've watched every episode of the animated series. I'm pacing myself mm. because you cannot watch too much of that at once. It's, it's a <laughs> special say- kind of bad. Well, so so here the thing the thing about the animated and this is this is where I'll defend the animated series and that is this right remember that Star, Star Trek was only on for two and a half seasons right yeah and then it went into um and then like it was wasn't on I think it was in reruns a little bit the had, syndication hadn't really kicked off yet mm-hmm. but Saturday morning you'd get up in the morning you'd wake up you'd, you'd get your cereal you sit in your pajamas and you'd watch cartoons on TV oh, yeah. space ghost and all that kind of stuff like this is back mm-hmm. in my day like I'm talking like late 60s early 70s right yep. and this star trek animated series came on and it was like oh my god it's star trek yeah, yeah right so when you in context right it was like the best of the saturday morning cart johnny quest was on you know yeah, yeah. all the sort of you know uh, there was a george of the jungle you know all those sort of you know space ghost was yeah my favorite right and now i watch space ghost now and, and that one guy i forget his name but the one guy who does space ghost voice he was in every single saturday oh, yeah. morning cartoon right yeah he did all the hannah barbaras yeah 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 that guy I forget, we'll dig his name up but uh he uh yeah i mean that was so so that was from an accessibility point of view that's all we had you know yeah yep. so, so it was great from that perspective right so, but yeah you're right it is pretty, but it doesn't hold up terribly pretty, well it's it's, it's a it's a little uh it's a little clunky in its animation and yeah. the plotting is not exactly modern pacing it's a no. it's a little clunky no it's very very 60s yeah yeah exactly, yeah exactly but, they had that uh, one pterodactyl sound for pterodactyls in <laughs> and every and every single show they ever did same yeah. one for johnny quest same one for thunder on the Barbarian. There was a Huckleberry Finn one where he was he was it was Johnny Whitaker and he was live action but the rest of it was all cartoon and stuff you know oh yeah yeah they had like a sort of he was on a green it was like like the uh, early green screen yeah yeah not like any not anywhere near like Who Framed Roger Rabbit yeah anyway yeah. so the reason why I'm, we're, we're paraphrasing and, and we're beating around the bush here what we're talking about is the reason why we're here and that is Star Trek right Star Trek and we you know we do as those of you who stuck with the show so far know that we do talk about everything else as well as Star Trek but Star Trek is the focus of the show, thus the name podcast. But uh, yeah, so here we are. We've got the, the premiere of 
bar, the bar trailer. Which yeah, so we, we had a teaser trailer before that was, you know, it had given us a little taste of what we could see. We saw that there was Seven of Nine little cameo. We saw that there was a cameo from what appears to be Data. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, a little taste of post uh, Star Trek Nemesis Picard. Yeah. And now we finally get a look at the actual uh, little more substance, a little more, a little more depth. So right. I don't know how deep you went down the rabbit hole on this thing, but I noticed all kinds of stuff in here. Well, I did. I mean, I'm going to see if I can run it while we talk here. Oh, it's really loud. Can you hear that? So we knew that Data was going to be in the show, right? Yeah, we knew that Data was going to be there, and we'd seen that Seven was going to be there. So, but this this clip right here makes me think this is a dream sequence. Totally dream sequence. There's no way. Yeah, that is not true, sir. Because he hands him the brush and says, "You can finish the story, right?" And especially because they're both wearing their <laughs> uniforms. Right, right, right. Oh, and then we right. cut to him in the the um, Logan movie. I came here Do you think that uh, later on there's a discussion about the fact that he named his dog after Will Riker? Please, oh, yeah? After me. It says the dog's name is number one. Well, yeah, but th- that's sort of what you do, I guess, right? Is that full screen for you, by the way? It's nice to see you up and around again. What do you see on your screen, John? Sorry, it's a little loud. I can't hear the. Uh, I can't hear you. I can hear that. I am standing up for the Federation for what it should still represent. This is no longer. Funny, I've turned it way down. Go home. Yeah. Hmm. I have to help. Oh wait, this way. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, yeah. Got the badge. He slaps on his badge. Now, notably, that's the badge that would have been the last one he wore in those last couple of movies. Right, right. We get our look at Michelle Hurd. That's she's playing Rafi Musaker. I looked that up. Mm-hmm. And Allison Pill playing Doctor Agnes Girardi. Right. And Evan Avogora, Avogora playing Elnor, the guy with the sword. Mm-hmm. Is he a Vulcan? Uh, they're not sure if he's a Vulcan or a Romulan. Uh, and then behind the seat of that ship, there we see Chris Rio uh, is played by Santiago Cabrera. Mm-hmm. Right, the Borg ship. Ooh, Borg. He looks like an elf. That little glimpse for a second there, we see Hugh. Oh yeah. Oh right. Okay. And this is this is the reveal of the of the trailer here, right? Going up. Yeah. This is the well, it's fan service, right? Yeah. Riker and Deanna, and we also get a little. Uh, we have a kid, clearly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Old fashioned warbird. We saw for a second there. Yeah. Doesn't the kid grow up to be Kylo Ren eventually? <laughs> <laughs> I want them to cut to the kid and to have ridges on its forehead. Right. Mr. Worf. Mr. Worf. I, I don't know what recorded there, folks. So, is Mr. Worf in there? No, but uh, you'll recall late in the seasons of uh, TNG, there was a l- little thing there between Worf and Troy, right? Right, okay. They were an item. I think it would just be hilarious if they were like, why is our child halfling on? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So, two scenes <clears throat> that really caught my eye. Obviously, the fan service is there. We saw data. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a one little clip in there where we see uh, a room full of what look like androids. Yeah. With numbers on their heads. I don't know if you want to call it up and we can we can slow-mo through there or if we can just sort of talk yeah, our me, way through let it. Me, yeah, let me uh, bring it over here. So the first... <laughs> I don't know what people what people were able to see. Like, I don't know what, what this... I have no idea what was recording. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that again. Yeah. The first trailer we saw for the Picard show, we saw at one point uh, uh, Dr. Girardi, that's Alison Pill's character, mm-hmm. opens up a drawer and we see a disassembled soon... Uh, oh, wait, am I sharing? I'm not sharing. Yeah, we see a different uh, a disassembled rope or android we see it could be data it could be lore it could be uh that other guy yeah what, what was the what was, what was the third one they called i can't even remember his name now b4 oh that's right b4 that's right um it'll be interesting to see what comes of that because it almost seems like there's a little borg android army kind of thing going on there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm curious to see what that is right has so has uh dr Girardi been working on taking the next level level of android are we going to see the next level of that scene right there oh yeah, yeah. uh are we going to see the next generation of sort of the the data style androids is are we going a little irobot here going, yeah like they look a little like nouveau data is right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that so really the, the person walking with him looks like a robot or an android too right yeah so that that scene really caught my eye there's a scene where uh, just again for like a flash of about two seconds you see hugh so from the classic uh tng 
got episode. Kurt Hauer and the other guy from Blade Runner. I know, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, we saw a little glimpse of Hugh, and that made, sort of caught my this eye. Guy wondering... who, this guy who's in every show ever. Yeah, yeah. And there's one little scene that that caught my eye too, where you can see. I, I've watched this trailer probably more times than is healthy, yeah. but um, there's a scene where Seven, right there, Seven mm-hmm. is cradling someone who's clearly not yeah. doing well. Yeah, <laughs> and it's unclear who she's holding. Hmm. She looks like she does in the rest of the show, so it looks like it's modern. So you'd think that if that was Chakotay, who she ends up with at the end of Voyager, mm-hmm. that he would have gray hair by then, although maybe he dyes his hair. Right. Maybe he ages really well. But it, could it be this guy here? I don't know. It could be, or it could be... It could be this guy here, the Vulcan? Well, so one of the, the, the speculations that I had read online that I thought was an interesting notion was, could that be Icheb, the other org that was on Voyager with them? Right. There's Hugh. You just, you just oh, s- Hugh. passed Hugh as he's creeping around the corner there that's Hugh mm-hmm. the former Borg uh that uh, set free in TNG. Right. So there's all kinds of little tasty Easter eggs in here. Again, I I mean, not that we weren't both in the bag for this series already, but but trying to sort of piece together where they're going with this story and how they sort of circle it back. Obviously, we see, uh, yeah, an old-fashioned warbird. Uh, so Romulans are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got we've got Borg, we got Romulans, and we've got uh, androids. Mm. Interesting ingredients for a good show. Yeah. What'd you make of all this? Um, no, I just I you know I. I didn't spend as much nearly as much time as you did obviously watching this thing but um you know i and i i think i caught all the all the sort of nuances i didn't i would have wouldn't have recognized you anyway but um yeah i, I don't know I'm, I'm looking forward to it you know, it's only a few months away right yeah it's nice we finally got a date january 23rd so it looks like it's going to be on every thursday like we had uh discovery last january right, right. uh so that's kind of cool we go back to our uh our thursday night uh watch a trek episode talk about a truck episode mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's fun have you not noticed that like lately you, you spend so much time waiting for that next thing to premiere these days like your whole life is like waiting for the next series to start whatever yeah, it is like, you know, th- there's everything. enough stuff that you don't really notice the gaps as badly like i i certainly this year felt kind of weird because trek wrapped up in like what february march something like that and then we didn't have any more trek until this week right um but there's always seems like there's something where you just you know you're you're sort of in the downtime in between this week we got this weekend we got the drop of uh, season three of mm-hmm. um uh, big mouth which is a series I really enjoy right. on on Netflix, and I was yeah, like, "Yeah, I'm oh. sort of watching that one yet." Yeah, that was oh, it's it's here already. I'm like, "Oh, that's good." So I sat and I watched that all weekend. I was like, "Oh, that's done." Okay, well, what's next? And I looked at my thing. It's like, "Oh, back Batwoman and Supergirl on this week. Cool." And then a couple weeks from now, the new Watchmen series starts, and so it, there's always something sort of rolling around. Right, right. right. Um, you know, it, again, right now we're in a huge hiatus on Doctor Who, right? Like a Doctor Who hasn't been on for a while. Last last new episode was January first. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever, we've ever talked about the uh, the Puppet Doctor. Um, um, yes. Yeah. You were mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. She's just done. She, she was just at a, a Doctor Who convention in somewhere. I forget where it is. But, um, and she brought her 13th soccer. Oh, nice. Yeah. So she had a, a booth with all her doctors there. So she's been doing a new doc, Doctor series. I'm going to go back to sharing the next story here. Yeah. So the next one's another good one where we got another look. Uh, well, our first look, right? Our first look at season three of Discovery. And this one, again, lots of interesting stuff in here Yeah. Um, for a really short trailer. Again, this one's more of a teaser right the the card was a little longer this one's pretty short you believe in ghosts what does that mean a badge on your shirt look at Idris Elba what's wrong with this flag not enough stars not enough stars so she ends up in the future but where is Discovery in the end of the series I think they're there too. I think they just got okay. separated. Oh, okay, right. Because they say she carried us into the future. Mm. To make that future bright. New guns, interesting. There was some speculation about the the uh, uniform that um, George is wearing there too. Yeah. Yeah. It's on CTV and or CTV Space Channel. That's right, CTV Space Channel. So again, interesting stuff in here. So now we know exactly where they ended up. Yeah. Uh, we know that they're 930 years in the future, which puts them in the 32nd century. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw Book, the character from the Short Trek. So that whole Short Trek episode last year, where he is alone on an abandoned Discovery. Okay, right. That clearly is tied into this timeline. So that's interesting. Mm. So now we can go back and look at that for a 
a little bit more for clues. Okay. Yeah. We still haven't got to tie in with, with Harry Mudd yet anywhere, though. No, I haven't seen him yet. Um, I mean, I mean, and, from, and I wonder if we from... will, because um, because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have that, because we know that he ends up in the past, because we know that he intersects with uh, oh, Kirk and Kirk and Spock, Spock and, in the yeah. original series. So who knows? Yeah. Um, I noticed in there that we saw Trills. Mm-hmm. We saw uh, a group of Trills standing around there, and that scene where she is lying on her uh, back in the water, in the creamy water there. Right. That looks like a scene from DS9, and that's on, that's to do with the Trills too. Mm-hmm. So here's my question. Are we going to see Dax? Is Dax still alive? Not necessarily the same actor, because they don't have to do that, because Dax is actually the, the symbiote, right? Mm-hmm. And lives on in different people over the uh, course of time. So I wonder if we're going to see another tie-in to uh, sort of our era of Trek from the you know late 90s, early 2000s and see Dax as a character in this show a thousand years in the future. Oh, right. Yeah, because she'll she'll just continue. Or he will continue. It, yeah. Dax, the entity that is the, the blob that lives in people's bellies, could still be, well, still be alive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that popped into my head when I saw Trills. I wonder if they're going to if they're going to loop that back in or if they're going to just Trills ignore that. People with the, with the, the, the spots. spots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the flag. I pointed at the flag, right? So the, the Federation flag has uh, a huge number of stars on it in the era that they come from because it's supposed to be one star for all the represented members mm-hmm. and the, the flag that they unfurl in that one scene has six exactly six stars on it which I guess speaks to the dire straits that the Federation finds itself in 900 years into the future mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so again not a lot not a lot to chew on there but still some interesting little little tastes for you know again we, we talked about this when we got to the end of, uh, of season two of Discovery that we really are into the undiscovered country now because the last piece of future Trek we ended on was Star Trek Nemesis. Uh, I guess you could say that we also have the first J.J. Abrams movie, wherein we find out that Romulus was destroyed and uh, Spock from that timeline goes into the past uh, and then changes things and then they split off into their own timeline. But either way, uh, Picard is taking us 20 years into the future and now we're getting 900 years into the future past Discovery, so another 800 years plus uh, from when we left off in, in Nemesis. Um, this is exciting. This is really cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how they decide to sort of play this forward, where this universe went, who, you know, how all these different races played out, you know, where things ended up. It's been, you know, 20 years almost since we really sunk our teeth into 15 anyways, since we really got to sink our teeth into that part of the future and not just keep going backwards. We went backwards with Enterprise. We went backwards with Discovery. Um, it'll be interesting to finally move forwards and see where this goes. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of going backwards, mm-hmm. we got our short treks back this week mm. all of a sudden which was really weird they didn't announce that they were going to air them did they <laughs> no i don't think so i just uh, yeah i was i saw the news and they're like oh by the way there's a new short trek it's already up online i was like what mm-hmm. what what happened yeah so we got uh episode one was called q a and we read the synopses for what was coming on a few of these uh this episode focused on spock a young ensign spock uh his first day aboard the uss enterprise and his getting trapped in the turbo lift with number one hmm. um as with all of these a nice tight little you know 14 minutes i think it is uh rebecca romaine back as number one right and uh yeah what did you think about this one i thought it was pretty entertaining yeah it was pretty good i thought yeah sure and and interesting in that i don't know they kind of played off the, the fact that number one and spock have a sort of secret relationship uh in terms of a secret that they share mm-hmm. um you know the, she's testing him as as a new ensign i think he is right it, 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 yep. in the, in the show yep. um or in this episode and uh yeah they don't like it's giving away too much to say they get stuck in an elevator or turbo lift and yep. uh, they spend some time together um, yeah <clears throat> that's and play ten thousand questions yeah yeah that's a whole a whole q a thing comes in for sure mm-hmm. yeah, and it, so you've got you've got in here in the show notes too that tribbles is that coming out that next week's episode or yeah so up on uh, the social media channels for star trek today they posted a little 30 second trailer for the second episode right, right. and uh guest star h john benjamin who who uh, a lot of our fans will know as the voice of Archer mm. and the voice of Bob from Bob's Burgers, and also a hell of a funny <laughs> stand-up comedian, mm. uh, is going to be uh, uh, the star of that one. And also Rose Salazar is going to be in that. Rose Salazar uh, most recently was uh, Alita, Battle Angel. Right. Uh, and she was also in uh, the Maze Runner series of moves. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, an interesting uh, an interesting look there. They're sort of playing it as a mix between, uh, you know, a typical triple episode where it's a little bit playful and also it's sort of playing out a little bit like a horror movie 
like they're trapped on the space station where the triples keep multiplying and uh, and mm-hmm. may, may turn feral, which is, again, it looks really, really funny. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see how they, they circle back to triples. We haven't heard of, uh, of triples really since, uh, well, Enterprise, I think, was the last time we saw them, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah looking yeah. forward to that. I have to go and find it. What, what night that going to be on? Do you know? Or? Thursday. It's on Thursday nights. Yeah. Okay, but at a weird time because it's a 15 minute slot, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they've been like chucking them in the middle of movies and stuff. It's it's a weird thing when it's on TV, but then they're they're popping them up the next morning on uh, on Crave here in Canada, right? And yeah, I think it's on CBS All Access as well, obviously yeah. in the in the United States. I think that's why how I watched it. Crave that is, and um, I haven't looked it up. I know last year there was a real kerfuffle because the short tracks weren't airing. Uh, so all the other territories outside of uh, Canada and America, it airs on Netflix. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But I know that there was a kerfuffle because they didn't put them out episode by episode on Netflix. They were putting them out all at once. Right. So I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look up to see if they're doing that this year, but uh, hopefully they fix that for our international fans because I know that's uh, nobody likes to be left behind. We don't like being left behind here in Canada. I'm sure you don't like being left behind elsewhere. Everyone else. Everyone else. Yes. All right. Well, are we going to bang off these last couple of things before we get to our watch list? Or what? yeah, let's let's just uh, yeah, maybe maybe do a couple sentences on each of these. And we we have a few things that we haven't caught up on. I don't know if we want to go as far back as uh, we 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 had held off on talking about Spider Man Far From Home because uh, Jaime hadn't seen it last time we reconnected. Right, um, right. So we could sum that up with good, enjoyable. It's already available on Blu-ray. Enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Well worth a nice little epilogue to uh, the Avengers Endgame. Certainly a little more, a little more uplifting after the you know bit of a bummer at the end of Endgame. I'm trying to remember. Did we? Did you and I go see that in the theater? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You and I and uh, and Zayvon saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Stranger Things season three. What did you think of that? Uh, I certainly enjoyed it. I think more than season two. Okay. Season it was two shorter. It seemed shorter. Uh, well, it went back to eight episodes. So it was eight episodes for oh, first okay. season, nine for season two, and then eight for season three. So it went back by an episode. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the sort of teen angsty kind of stuff. That was funny. There was lots mm-hmm. of humor played through that. The boys versus the girls and, yeah. and you know, uh, some, you know, obviously they're becoming teenagers and there's romance and stuff like that. That was funny. Um, it was certainly a little more lighthearted, I felt. Season two is a real slog. You know, yeah. the, that poor kid who, you know, he's abducted in the, in the uh, upside down for the whole first season. And then in the second season, he's like tortured and, you know, screaming and, you know, having fevers and stuff like that. It was nice to see that. But then, you know, there was a lot of angst through that one as well of mm-hmm. you know relationships fraying and girls versus you know you you know do you spend more time with your buddies do you spend more time with the girls that was a whole dynamic so that got a little little tedious at times but uh, but yeah I liked it yeah it was alright well one thing that's that's been not I think it's a spoiler but the reveal is that the three movies are connected as one big giant story too yeah the director had said that yeah and we cool. got a little <laughs> teaser for season four for that too they just put up a teaser last week oh yeah saying okay. that uh, we're not in Hawkins anymore so they're going to take it outside of that little town which for the first time it'll be interesting all right okay yeah. good omens good omens what do you think of good omens i enjoyed it the book was much better well yeah that, that goes I, en- I enjoyed it because i like two actors they were really really quite charming I, I enjoyed them and their performances very much yeah it did, it did seem pretty short but then i've, I've read a bunch of neo gaming game and stuff in the last three or two or three years so they the story's all kind of they're very similar they, they all melt together after a while but mm-hmm. yeah so so uh i did enjoy good omens um tv show it was interesting yeah it, again very pretty nice interesting to watch watch and yeah you, you definitely watch that and and you know you paid attention while you watched it. well and apparently it was uh so neil gaiman was very involved in the creation of that tv show and mm-hmm. apparently did such a good job he's going to be the showrunner for the sandman series that they've oh, long wow. been pushing out there so um you know if that was an audition for what he's capable of that's awesome cool. i'm like, very more excited for sandman than i was before all right um the boys no, or the boys the, now okay no, wait the boys is the b- movie that uh, friend of the show justin's working on is that the one yes he's working on season two i think it just wrapped up actually yeah um yeah so w- one of our relations is working he's a sound and and power techniques and stuff and lighting and things so yeah. he's been working on that show um which is actually filmed like next door to where i work right yeah because i see these these signs you know saying that i forget what it, the sign says but it's like it's not them but it is them kind of thing anyway um but we joked about that we went to we went to uh massey or not Massey Hall to uh, Roy Thompson Hall, which it, it doubles for the uh, headquarters of the super team yes, and yeah, the boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were there for a show a few weeks ago. Yeah, so I liked it. It was, it, I think it was pretty good. Um, we can't wait for season number two. Of course, the twisty end at the end. I mean, did, yep. did, let me tell me you didn't see that coming. Well, I did, but I've read the entire comic. Oh, have you? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, would you have seen it coming if you hadn't read the. Yes, totally. It was very, very, very telegraphed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, it's uh, funny, but, it's, no, it's, but nonetheless, 
honest, I thought it was good. Like, I, I really enjoyed all the actors, and I really thought that they they had a lot of depth to it. For a show that really wasn't that long, it was only, was it six episodes, eight episodes, something like that? Yeah, really sure. um, It was, uh, they actually sort of gave a lot of depth to the characters, and, and you know, you sort of understood their motivations and who they were and stuff. Yeah. I, I it's, a bit, well it's a bit, it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, because there's our hero, the, 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 the protagonist is a bit like Arthur Dent, you know, sort of fish out of water, yep. you know, kind of thing happening there, right? Like, yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed it. Looking forward to it. Doom Patrol. I Doom think Patrol. I, I think I just binged through the through the through that show uh, again. What really wasn't paying attention to it. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, again, what did you think? Let's ask you first. I guess I I loved it. I really did. I I, <laughs> I wasn't sure what to make of it because uh, it some... was different from that perspective. I mean, like it, like most like I said, you know, how many cop shows can you watch? How many doctor shows can you watch? Okay, so how many superhero shows can you watch? It is unlike anything else. Exactly. That's what I mean. And it's that different. I will give it full marks for uh, like they took huge swings sometimes it didn't connect yeah. but they took huge swings on that show yeah, yeah. Um, the characters their arcs how deeply flawed like damn right unlikable some of those times those characters mm-hmm. were mm-hmm. I mean they are very very flawed characters um, every single one of them has very unlikable traits and yet you do find yourself rooting for them and invested in their relationships with each other and yeah. uh, that one went a little longer I think it was more episodes 15 episodes or something like that so it was a little longer mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I i just admired the hell out of that show i like the weirdness of it i always liked that comic book it was always one of my favorites because it was just really far out there they fight really weird villains they have really weird existential you know storylines and stuff mm-hmm. um and i was worried that when i heard they were going to do a show that it would be a little sanitized uh but it was you know it was pretty raw and it was pretty gross uh and it was funny and raunchy and uh and i in the same way that i really enjoyed that happy series for again just taking huge swings uh i'm happy to have shows that are really trying to do something else and not just be a story of the week monster show right. superheroes beat the bad guys show okay cool all right well let's get to the watch list we get, we're not gonna do jaime's watch list thing because he's not here yeah um, yeah eh, on that um all right so in. i got a couple things um i'm not sure when we're gonna get back at this i don't know if we're gonna keep doing them based on these short treks we'll be able to do some short ones over the next few weeks so i'll just do a couple of quick ones that are coming up in the next couple of weeks uh next week we're going to get the season premiere of uh the final season of arrow uh it's going to be a short season only 10 episodes apparently and it is going to be focused on the adaptation of crisis on infinite earths which we've talked about before so they're going to do this huge uh across all of the dc shows including uh black lightning they're going to bring back all these characters including characters from, now we know from over the summer we're going to bring back characters from smallville from mm-hmm. lois and clark from some of the movies from burt ward from the 1966 Batman series. They're going to bring back all these different characters to be part of this, and it's all going to be built around this Arrow show. So I was getting a little bit tired of Arrow over the last couple of seasons. It was starting to sort of wear on me a little bit. It was getting a little bit sort of bad guy of the weekish kind of stuff. Right. Uh, this I'm I'm really looking forward to. I can't wait to see how they bring all this together. Um, they certainly have earned my trust with lots of good stories over the years, especially when they do these crossover ones. They've had a long time to build up to it. So uh, let's see if the payoff works out but i'm i'm dying to see what happens and on october 15th we're gonna get the first episode so that's cool that's funny. Yeah, yeah. and the other one that i'll flag as well is is watchmen so hbo's watchmen series starts on october 20th uh which is about a week and a half away mm-hmm. um looking forward to that one although again we talked about this previously we've seen the trailers we've sort of read a little bit about it it's really hard to gauge where they're going with this they've said it's not a strict adaptation of course we've already seen a movie version of this uh very very seminal work of in a graphic novel. How I'm, close was the movie to the novel? Quite, quite. Oh, okay. There were some, some obvious, you know, differences because Watchmen, the book, is very much of its time. It's built in Cold War America. It's very much focused on that culture. Um, it's it's of its time. This They tried to sort of modernize it a little bit and change things up. It's good. It's not by any means great, but it's good. Okay. But the TV series looks like it's just sort of set in that world, but not necessarily grounded to that storyline. So it's, again... We talked about this with superhero shows. How many dystopia shows can you have? You know, we've got Handmaid's Tale. We've got, you know, all these things about, well, what happens after the, you know, society and fascism and, and all these different elements that sort of come into play. Okay. <laughs> I trust the people who are working on the show. They're smart. They're good creators. I trust HBO as the makers of quality television. So I will absolutely give this show a watch. I'm, I'm infinitely curious to see what they're going to do with it. The cast seems interesting, mm-hmm. but I'm going into this one with, you know, a little bit of trepidation as to 
adding the name Watchmen to something. Watchmen in comics is an incredibly high bar. Right, you yeah. wouldn't dare compare Watchmen the comics to a, another comic. That would be, you know, obviously Absolutely. putting it at the highest pedestal, right? Right, yeah, yeah. I, I worry about putting that on a, on a TV show mm-hmm. and it not delivering. Mm-hmm. But yeah. All right, and the last one. The last one I had was, and again, I don't know if we're going to get back at it before this, but I did want to flag that we're only right now, not just about a month away from the launch of Disney Plus. And we talked about Disney Plus earlier in this episode. Um, there is a ton of stuff in the works for Disney Plus, but right off the hop, the first thing that we're going to get, and one of the reasons why people might want to jump in earlier than later is The Mandalorian. Right. Uh, we've seen a couple trailers for this. Are we getting Disney but, Plus in Canada? We are getting it on the same day, same launch day. So it's on November 12th. We'll be able to and we're not going to see this is the only place to watch The Mandalorian. Only place you can watch it. It is an exclusive. So uh, we've seen a couple trailers. It looks really interesting. It looks like that sort of grittier, darker sort of uh, Tatooine mob side of of the Star Wars universe. Uh, it doesn't look like it's rooted on any of our established characters. So this is really the first time that Star Trek is, or Star Trek Star Wars has done that thing mm-hmm. that we've always talked about wanting it to do, which is to stop focusing on nostalgia and start expanding the universe. So I'm very very curious to see if this pays off the way that it potentially could. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So now now to me. Over to me. Over to you. So, so yeah, I went and saw a movie called Ad Astra from uh, which was at TIFF again, but I didn't. I, I saw it in the theaters and it was just, mm-hmm. you know, had some time. It came out, wanted to go see it in IMAX in this case. And you uh, love a space movie. I love it. I love me a space movie, especially ones with suspended animation, long, long travel. And so it, it take it's interesting. It takes place like, you know, I, I don't think it's any spoiler to sort of say that he's looking for his father who happens to be Tommy Lee Jones, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so at, you know, and, and it's sort of like he's disappeared and, and uh, they got a signal back from around Neptune or something. Uh, he seems to be there. He's been there for 16 years. I don't know what he ate for 16 years or who <laughs> care for 16 years. But uh, yeah, so so he and a bunch of people survive up there and um, there's a there's a, an effect that their being there has on on the rest of the world uh, that's that's causing uh, uh, issues and that's why Brad Pitt's character is, is meant to go and sort of investigate, not necessarily go and rescue his dad kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, it, it, the moon is a sort of, it's, it's where, it, it's very realistic from the point of view of where they think space exploration is going. Like, you know, you go from the Earth to the moon. Actually, he it begins with Brad Pitt working as an astronaut mm-hmm. on a big giant antenna that shoots up out of the Earth so high up into the sky that you have to wear an astronaut's uniform a suit to work on this this antenna. Mm. Like it's actually connected to the ground and it goes all the way up into space, right? So this big mm. giant antenna. But um, but the moon is a stepping, but there's a colony on the moon and it's all developed and built up. So it's kind of like flying from here to LA to Australia kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So like so if you think of the moon as sort of like LAX kind of thing, right? Um, so he goes from the moon and then he goes to Mars and Mars is where they where the sort of connection to um to uh, uh the, the Neptune mission is springing from, and it's all sort of like you know uh, need to know kind of basis kind of story and and uh, but like I said, he's just been there to explore and uh, so you know, investigate. I mean, so he he wasn't really going to go, but then, of course, you know, being a Brad Pitt movie, he has to sort of hold a Tom Cruise card and you know jump on a spaceship and go off and save the day kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a bit of um, it, it was the, the space movie with Sandra Bullock. Gravity. Gravity. It's a bit. It's got a bit gravity-ish. Like there's a lot of very unrealistic space events that happen mm-hmm. that you know chances of survival are, are slim to none and yet you know our hero you know gets through unscathed you know um, doesn't even have to break out a band-aid in the entire movie <laughs> um, you know and there's you know some sort of Laura Croft kind of leaping from one chasm to the other and grabbing on with his fingers you know again totally realistic mm-hmm. um, my one complaint about the movie besides the fact is where did they get the food that they ate during these long space travels he actually well yeah there's one point there where he has to travel a long way mm-hmm. got some stubble on his face like you have right now right and when he arrives back on earth at the end and takes his helmet off the stubble has not grown okay so i mean i mentioned this to mark on on more than just code and, and he said well maybe he shaved the day before he arrived just you know because he knew he was coming back to earth and well we saw matt damon do that in the martian right he, he's shaved? getting picked up so he shaves off that big beard right because he wants yeah, to be he, um... he wants to look his best if he's going to go meet his fate right i guess i guess i don't know i don't know yeah it, you know it, it's sort of like you, you kind of expect that they would be more like castaway you know where you got the robinson caruso thing going with the you know the rags and the long yeah. hair and the beard or or mount count of monte cristo kind of thing you know those are much more realistic portrayals of someone who's been stuck in a place for a long time you know i mean like if you think about it like like traveling from one planet to another in a, in a small capsule the size of a volkswagon you know yeah. talk about the cramps you'd get 
you know, like, <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and then again, what do you eat? Where do you, where do you put the food? How do you grow it? You know, like exact, all that kind of stuff. And then, but it's interesting too, because there's a couple of characters in the movie who have never actually been to earth. They were, they were born and raised and now they're adults living you know, on another planet. Mm. So from that point of view, like the way, the way that space travel happens, like interstellar, it's very realistic in terms of how, what could possibly happen, notwithstanding the Tesseract and there. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. So Ad Astro is one. So, and then of course I mentioned Tiff and I want to talk about three movies I saw at Tiff. Um, two of them, two of them I actually had tickets for and the third one I, I got a free ticket because they, they it was one of the winner uh, select ones, right? So I saw a movie called Parasite and it's a Korean, I believe it's Korean, uh, film in with Korean subtitles and it's, it's amazing romp. Uh, it's not very sci-fi-ish um, but it's got this, uh, you know, this, this these uh, uh, grifters, I guess a family of grifters are so poor that they have to grift their way into into higher society. Uh, they end up they, they end up taking over this house, and you know, the, first of all, the son goes as an English as a second or as a, as an English teacher mm. to teach this young Korean daughter, um, and then he works his sister in as the art teacher. Although, and they pretend they don't know each other. Mm-hmm. Um, going here, my ears needs my attention. Um, and then uh, then they work the mother in, and the father ends up being a chauffeur, and all. And it just in madness ensues. And then there's it's actually listed as a horror movie, and I'm not going to spoil that for people because it does have a, a interesting interesting climactic ending mm. um but yeah it's definitely worth watching uh, uh, if when it comes to netflix they'll probably run it with an overdub but uh, but even in even in the original in the original language and watching reading the subtitles like like the jokes were were very successful like you know mm. the, the entire audience would guffaw at the same time once the words came up on the screen and we could see what they're saying right but nice. uh, yeah i'm curious to see how how someone who actually speaks the language re- re- relates to the movie but yeah it's a, a very very good movie um wouldn't be surprised if it gets nominated for for language film at, at mm. the Oscars. That Interesting. Was, yeah. Another one I saw, and and this is our, our friend uh, Hillary uh, or Felicity Huffman, who we talked about on the show, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she famously, the day before I saw the movie, had just been convicted and, and sentenced to 14 days in jail for, for <laughs> helping her daughter with her SAT scores. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in a movie called Tammy's Always Dying. And what was interesting about this is, is she plays this woman, older woman who smokes. Um, uh, ha- her daughter, the actress who plays her daughter is amazing. And of course, you know, the actors... It, when you see these movies, uh, sometimes the actors and stuff come out and they talk about the movie uh, after the show. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm thinking I must have seen another. I must have seen another movie. I saw two. I saw two two movies from the from the. Um, there was a whole uh, uh, steering towards you know supporting women uh, in in things. So so one movie I saw was called uh, I can't remember what it was, but it'll come back to me in a minute. But it was it was written by a couple of women, produced by a couple of women. And of course, it had women acting. Oh, the one with um, Heather Graham. I don't know if you heard about that one. Uh, no. She plays a she plays a divorcee who um, her husband dies, her ex husband dies, and leaves the new family penniless. Mm. And so she's got a daughter, and so the daughter has a stepsister in this new relationship, and so the the new wife moves in with the old wife and the two daughters and they live together for a short period of time and so really interesting and it's you know from a from a female perspective is one of those movies where it's it, it has that i figure i figure what the, the the stat is but it's two women talking to each other for more than 20 minutes without talking about a man yeah 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 the yeah. bechdel test yeah yeah <coughs> what is it bechdel bechdel, bechdel test yeah bechdel test. yeah so it, it totally passes that and the kids are hilarious and the, the one daughter is totally into texting on her phone you know, at one point the two two younger daughters the parents are the older parents are, are arguing and you know, at each other like you know, a couple of cats, right? And so the the two daughter, the two younger daughters jump in the car and they 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 scream off to go and have a, a hamburger at a place where their dad used to take them, right? But um, so the younger daughter, her phone rings and she says, "What is it with old people and phone calls?" <laughs> Text back, you "Leave us alone," right? That was the best line in the entire movie. What is it, the old people in phone? Calls? Um, yeah. So that was a, 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 what the hell was the name of that movie? Anyway, that that's my fourth pick. But Tammy's Always Dying was was an amazing portrayal. She plays a, a older alcoholic. Like a woman constantly trying to kill herself, and her daughter constantly has to rescue her. And it's all about how the daughter's trapped in this this toxic relationship with her mother. And there's a whole self help angle, and you know she ends up on TV and stuff. But what's amazing about this is it's filmed in Hamilton. Oh right? yeah, it's so obviously filmed in Hamilton, right? And Hillary or Felicity Huff, I want to call her Hillary all the time. Felicity Huffman's is such an amazing actress that she actually sounded like she was from Hamilton. Oh nice, yeah. So like totally totally believable as as a Canadian, you know, and all like. And stuff and and regional to, to yeah, our yeah. particular way of talking right especially hamilton right hmm. that was that was great and you know and uh yeah like you know hamilton itself got got applause at the end of the of the, the director <laughs> came out and they sort of said what locations did you, you know, choose for this film it looks so much like hamilton he says, we filmed it in hamilton you know 
Hamilton. <laughs> it wasn't Toronto standing in for Hamilton. Like they, no, they Hamilton's got a pretty distinctive feel. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and uh, the last movie I saw, and again, so so uh, if you're a TIFF member, you get to go to see a one of the winning movies for free. And the, the winning, the People's Choice movie was was Jojo Rabbit. Didn't yep. get into that one. Yep. Um, and it was like almost impossible to get in. In fact, I waited, I waited in the rush line and the rush line was like probably two hours long and there was no chance and they had like five screens. There was no way we would get in to see that. But they used to show it at the Roy Thompson Hall, right? Mm-hmm. Which would have meant that like it's at 3,000 people, right? Yep, yep. We probably could have got into that one. Although they would have given out 3,000 tickets. So I guess sitting in, standing in the rush line for that would have been done. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the movie I did see, I got a, I, I, I actually called up and, and you had to call in. There was no online online purchasing of tickets. Horrible, by the way. Um, but uh, for, the, for the winning tickets, you have to call in or go to the box office. So I sat on hold with my phone and Carol's phone for like two hours. Mm. I think Xavier was here that day. Um, and so I finally got through and I got I got the last ticket for the Midnight Madness screening of, which was, wasn't at midnight, but that was the, the series that it ran under, mm-hmm. called The Platform. Mm-hmm. And The Platform is is very 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 similar to Cube. What it is basically is is you either are convicted of some wrongdoing. Oh, or you I heard about this here. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so the guy wants to quit smoking, so he volunteers to go into the platform for six months. And what you end up doing is it's this one, it's a concrete bunker, right? With a hole in the middle. And it's one bed on either side and you and you and your cellmate, right? And this platform, they put gorgeous food, like they, they you know, they culinary expertise and all this, they pile this platform up with food and it comes down the platform, mm-hmm. right? So if you're on platform one, you get first dibs at all the food and then platform two and so on, so on, so on, whatever, right? So he ends up on like platform 36 or whatever, don't quote me on this, but yep. in, in his first go. And every month, change, you change to it, you wake up and you're in a new platform. They drug you and you wait, but you're on a new level. And it's random in terms of where you end up. At one point, he ends up on level six. But, you know, he he's on this first platform with this other, this really crazy guy. And and uh, he's like, the, the food comes down. The guy just, you know, starts eating all this food. And he's like, you know, that's other people's leftovers you're eating. And he's like, I'm not eating that. And he goes, so he goes, and then, and of course, when the platform moves down, he spits onto the food. Like the, the old guy spits onto the food of the, the people below. Like, it's like, you know, the people are defecating and spitting and whatever and riding up and down on the platform to go from one level to the other. But then, you know, at one point he ends up on the very, very bottom level or very close to what he thinks is the bottom level. And it's like empty dishes, mm-hmm. right? So it's sort of this whole, this whole sort of thing like, you know, what would you do to survive in this situation? What would you do as a general, like at one point he's he's imprisoned by, he's in, in his cellmate is one of the people who put him in there. Mm-hmm. And she's going around and she's like making plates of food and then telling people below, I'm setting up a plate of food for you and you should do the same thing for the people below you. Mm-hmm. You know, sort of a, try, to, try to sort of put some sort of, you know, it's a sort of logic into reasoning and civilization as a whole. And yet, you know, the people below are just like, they're just going to dive in and start chewing on stuff as well, right? So Yeah, yeah. But it's sort of, it's this whole sort of twist. And it's very similar to the movie Cube in terms of like, how do you get out of the situation? How do you, anyway, so I won't give away the ending, but interesting sci-fi, very sci-fi, Pulp Fiction-y kind of story, right? So hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. It sounds like a, like a 50s pulp book, yeah. Yeah, but it, but it's totally like you know like like the premise is disgusting the whole thing is disgusting. you know there's murders and killing and knives and hmm. you, know, you can just imagine you know people the kind of extent that people will go to to survive kind of thing right yeah 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 so yeah so interesting yeah and and yeah and he's he's sort of like he's got this this sense of decency to him right and and he's you know he's very like how would a canadian react in this situation you know, kind of, yeah 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 you know amongst americans or something not yeah. to say anything bad against americans no 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 of course not of course not. our favorite people that aren't canadian yeah yeah. Anyway, so I think we we'll, we'll probably do. Um, I think last year we did each one of the sport, the, the short trucks. We did a, a quick little episode uh, on each one of those. So there's no no reason to think we wouldn't be back within next week or the week after. Talk about the triple episode and whatever comes after that. And hopefully, and then we got to write it out till there's no Avengers movies anymore. So we can't really no other reason for us to come back. Right? Well, we'd have to decide. There's a couple things coming up. Is uh, the Terminator movies coming out? We can decide Terminator. if we want to. Yeah, we, we can decide if we want to go see Terminator. Right, right. I just uh, Batman. Jojo Rabbit. Rabbit is coming. Wait, we're gonna go see Terminator. What are you talking about? Okay, well, you know what I'm saying. It's yeah. whether we whether or not our third partner in crime is going to be uh, watching it as well. Yeah. yeah. What's um, uh, uh, <laughs> the name? Uh, with the J. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lo, the, the J Lo or something like that. J Lo. That's it. J Lo. Yeah. J Lo. Yeah. Yeah. J Lo. J Lo Junior. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. There's there's still a few movies coming out over the next little bit too that we have to sort of decide whether or not we want to recap. But uh, yeah, and then you know we, we obviously people who are looking for some regular routine in our schedules will be. Uh, uh, looking ahead to January when we can start sinking our teeth into Picard for uh, for a couple months sure. in a row. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, hey, Jonathan, if people want to get in touch with you on the interwebs, 
where will they find you? You can always find me on Twitter and Instagram as at JPK News. My name is Dimitra, T-I-M-M-I-T-R-A. On the Twitter machine is where you'll find me. So until next time, we'll see you in the future. Bye. Bye. That concludes another episode of SpotCast, streamed to you via subspace signal. I'm friend of the show, Greg Keo, joining you from Sector 001. If you want to find out more about the podcast or see the episode show notes, visit the SpotCast website at spotcast.com. You can get in touch with your Star Trek nerd hosts on the website or follow them on Twitter. They're at SpotCast. If you have feedback or questions, send them a tweet with the hashtag AskSpotCast. If you like the show, please consider recommending it to a friend, writing a review on iTunes, or pledging any amount of gold press latinum at patreon.com slash spotcast. You can find details on how to help them out on the website, spotcast.com slash sponsor us. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the future. Wishing you peace and long life. We didn't talk about uh, Batwoman. We didn't forgot, talk about Batwoman. I forgot about Batwoman. You want to save that one for Jaime for next week? Well, we can do, we can do a bit of after show on it. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, not the strongest pilot I've ever seen. Well, that was a pilot? That was the pilot. So that was okay. the first episode. That was the pilot. Did you know that Bruce Wayne was Batman? <gasps> this just in. What? I love that uh, my my favorite what the hellism in that show was there and then again spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it yet um it's not a really spoilerific show so far but no. um there's a scene where in Bruce's office mm-hmm. which his cousin Kate mm-hmm. is in mm-hmm. she sees uh Martha Wayne's pearls right. hanging on a string right. and she in a, in a pyramid yeah in a pyramid and that is just a clue that leads her to another mystery and everything yeah. else yeah. in every telling of the murder of of Bruce Wayne's parents. They spill. They spill all over the ground. Yeah. Does he go back and get them? Does he collect wipe them? Wipe the blood off of them or whatever. Yeah. So that one kind of lost me a little bit. But I, I, I don't know. I, I was kind of intrigued about this one. Uh, the Batwoman comics that have been done over the last sort of six, eight years. Uh, some of them are fantastic. I love them. And and really good storytellers. Amazing artists. There's been some really interesting Kate Kane Batwoman stories. Mm-hmm. So I'm a fan of the character and. And, um, and again, as far as steps forward in, in television, obviously having a gay character uh, as the lead is a yeah. huge step forward. So that's great to see. I can't say that I loved Ruby Rose so far. I did not think she was particularly that's strong. That's No, she's the the lead actress, the one who plays Kate. Um, oh, oh, Ruby Rose is her name? Is her name, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I can't say that I thought she was particularly strong as an actress. I've only ever seen her in a couple of other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in Orange is the New Black and a couple other things. Okay. Um, she's a little one note for me. Now, maybe she's playing it really subdued maybe she's going for a sort of nouveau bruce wayne thing yeah but i found it a little bit like her range wasn't where i'd like it to be um maybe we'll see better you know again pilots are never the best example of what a show is going to be it usually takes them at least you know four or five episodes to really sort of find it so i'm i'm in i'll, I'll watch it right. but uh but not wasn't not didn't knock my socks off what do you think uh yeah uh, meh. yeah yeah it doesn't the thing is the shows that i think i prefer out of the dc stuff that they're showing right now on CW, I like The Flash and I like Supergirl the best. And part of the reason I love those is that they are atypical to the superhero stories which we see so much from DC, which are really kind of heavy and grimy and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, The Arrow show and uh, and Black Lightning and um, even, well, Legends can be a little bit goofy too, although there has been some sort of dark storylines in there too, but those ones are really sort of moody and dark and that's what this one felt like. It feels like, as you said, it's like another cop show. It's another, it's another Batman show. It's, oh, you know, villain of the week. And and there's an overarching plot that lasts over the season. And then there's a new big bad for the next season. It's very Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, like, mm-hmm. but not as charming, funny, or well written. Right, um, right. So again, I'll give it the benefit. I'm certainly in, if only for the fact that it's going to be part of this big infinite Earths crossover. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think, you know, there's certainly room for growth in there. I think it's interesting where they're going with it. I'm glad 
that they're putting more women in the front roles. I think it's great that they're putting more uh, LGBTQ uh, plus characters in those roles. Uh, particularly the one who actually is that. That's another nice step forward too. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So like, again, great as far as uh, inclusion, but I think it's also, you got to make a good show. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, Stump Down better. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I haven't tuned in for that one yet. Although I, I've read a bit of the comic and um, so, and I like Kobe Smulders. I think she's good. So yeah, it, it's a bit, it's kind of like a tamer version of Jessica Jones. Yeah. It's like, what, what if Jessica Jones was on uh, regular network television? Yeah. And, and couldn't swear and drink as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because she does drink a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it, I've watched two episodes so far. It's, it definitely got my attention, you know, for yeah. a lot of reasons, you know, because I, I just don't watch cop shows anymore. And mind you, I'm watching The Rookie. So what, you know, there you go. You know, it's got Nathan Fillion in it, right? So Yeah, that's another one. I, I never watched any of it. I watched all of Castle because, again, I, I like Nathan a lot. I think he's funny and, and charming and uh, and very, again, he just, he plays a very likable character. Yeah. But Castle got really the same thing. It's like a crime of the week procedural, you know, they did have some good, you know, really interesting twisty ones in there, but a lot of it was just sort of crime of the week. And as soon as you see the face that you recognize, you're like, well, that's clearly going to be the person who actually committed the crime because you wouldn't want to have an anonymous person. It has to be a good guest star, you know, like it was, right, right. you know, network TV is unfortunately a little too formulaic at this point and the formulas are all programmed into my cerebral cortex. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see how it turned out. It was yeah. an experiment. It folks. was an experiment. Yeah, Sorry. you get what you get. You got a couple of goons talking about it's sci-fi me. stuff and you trying out stuff. Pictures of me picking my nose while he's you know talking. That's probably what you're going to get though. Probably. We apologize. Yeah. <laughs> All but right. you have to know where your horizon is, right? You gotta. Well, I mean, the problem is my camera's up there. Right? Yeah, right? and and I'm looking at you over there. Yeah, I moved. At one point, I had you sort of off to this side, and then I centered you so that at least I beat the camera would be right over your head, so it's closer yeah, to I the did, middle. I did the same thing too, but look up. But I'm recording on my side, so I, again, I don't know what like like right now I'm talking, and yet the green line is around your face. So, mm. well, we'd appreciate your feedback, folks. Tell us what you think. Uh, I can change the view up next week, so you don't have to look at Howard and uh, Marty. You can I'll got some other posters and something about so uh, why don't we pause our recording and we'll say goodbye and then I have bye. a couple, couple of follow up questions for you. So all right, so uh, all right, bye everyone. Stop, stop recording. Bye. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub five hundred dollar dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.